I have 24 of my most anticipated book releases for 2024 that I can't wait to talk about. So get yourself a snack and or beverage and let's do this. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia. Welcome to my channel. So I am ready. It's that time of the year. It's taken me a minute, but we're here to do it. I have combed through lots and lots and lots of lists all over the place and narrowed it down to 24 of my most anticipated mystery thrillers that are coming out this year in 2024. I do have a sprinkling of horror and some bonuses at the end. Stay tuned for that. But this list, I'm so excited for. There are some themes running through a few of these books. I don't know what was going on with these authors this year. I think this happens every year where some authors just end up talking about the same topics, but they clearly appeal to me. So without further ado, let me just tell you about all the books on this list. Okay, so like I said in the intro, we have 24 books to go through. So I'm gonna keep this as short and sweet as possible. And we just gonna flow right through them. These are just the releases that I'm looking forward to for the first half of the year. Stay tuned in June for the second half of the year that I'm looking forward to. But kicking it off with number one, I had to have my phone here because this is just too much to try to remember and keep straight for you, but I'm gonna do my best. So first up, we have The Search Party by Hannah Richelle coming out on January 16th. I hope I have this video edited in time for you to see this before that. But if not, you maybe didn't know about this book and you can still go look it up. It's still early in the year. So if you know me, I love a locked room mystery. So of course we had to start this list off with a locked room mystery. This one is about a couple that take their 12 year old son on a glamping trip and they invite some friends and their children. Of course there are secrets, honey, and a storm rolls in. Of course. I love a storm in a book. So due to this storm, they can't get help. And I guess things go sideways and we go in between the police investigation. So if the police are involved, was there a murder? There was some kind of crime. We also get the perspective of someone in a hospital room. And then we also get the events that happened during the weekend. So this sounds so intriguing. Huh. I hope it's good. All of these always sound so promising. And then I pick them up and I start reading them and it's disappointing. But anyway, fingers crossed. So we're going to the next one. Next up, we have a book by an author who I have a complicated relationship with. <laughs> I loved his book, The Silent Patient, and DNF'd his book, The Maidens, but I'm going to give this one a try. And this one is The Fury by Alex Michaelides or Michaelides. I should know by now. Now, I already have my eye on this book, but I have even more reason to read it and I will have to finish it because I will be a co-host for Gabby Reed's book troupe live book club discussion. This is her March pick. And like I said, I'm going to be a co-host. I'm so excited. So I hope this goes well, but either way, it's going to be an interesting discussion. Now, this one is a thriller about a reclusive ex movie star who invites some friends to her private Greek island. And of course, a murder ensues. It sounds promising, but like I said, Alex Michaelides and me, complicated. <laughs> so we'll see. This one, I love the premise. It sounds so different. At least I have not heard of a book like this. So this is one of the ones I am most excited about on this list. There are a few, but this is one of the first ones. This is The Clinic by Kate Quinn coming out on January 23rd. This one is a thriller set in a remote rehab clinic in the Pacific Northwest. Now, I love the Pacific Northwest. It is a destination of mine to live. So I am really intrigued about this book. Also the rehab thing. Ooh, I don't think I've read a book that takes place in a rehab clinic. I'm sure there's some out there, but I have not read one yet. In this story, we have a woman whose sister dies inside the rehab clinic. So then she goes inside and pretends to be a patient to try to find out what happened to her sister. Ooh, 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 exciting. This is my last one for the month of January. Now, if you don't know, when I do my anticipated book releases videos, I just talk about the ones that I am the most excited about. I will link my Goodreads shelf for all of the 2024 book releases that I have my eye on. But like I said, these are the ones I'm the most excited about that I wanted to talk about in a video. So rounding out the month of January, we have The Concierge by Abby Corson. Now, I'm not quite sure about the release date. I know the Kindle edition says it comes out January 31st. Paperback, I'm not quite sure or if there's any any other editions 
you just have to keep an eye out. This one pretty much sounds just like the maid, but with a concierge instead of a maid. This one says we have the peaceful setting of the Cabin Green Hotel and a murder takes place. And of course, just like in the maid, the concierge Hector is accused of the murder and he has to clear his name. So. I love the maid. I'm sure Hector is completely different from Molly the maid. So I'm curious to see what shenanigans we get. It's supposed to be a cast of unique characters to work at the hotel and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Of course, I don't need to say that. Looking forward to all of these. Let's move on to the month of February. First up in the month of February, I have my first sci-fi mystery thriller on this list. It is Past Crimes by Jason Pinter. Or Pinter. I'm sorry, I was rushing to get this list together so I didn't research the author's pronunciations. I will get them right if they end up in a TBR and or recent reads video, but let's keep it moving. <laughs> in this book, it says we are on Earth Plus and the year is 2037 and nearly all human interactions have moved to the virtual world. No, thank you. I'd have to be somewhere else. And it gets worse. True crime fans can get into a hyper-realistic simulation where they can look into and investigate some of the most famous gruesome crimes in history. <laughs> okay. And because this is a sci-fi thriller, it gets a little complicated. We are also following a main character named Cassie whose job it is is to convince grieving families to sell their traumatic stories to the highest bidder, I guess for this virtual world simulation thing. I don't wanna be a part of this. This is not sound like anything I want. One day Cassie goes home and something horrible has happened to her husband, making her a target in the real world and the virtual world. What is going on in this book? So she's, I guess, on the run. I'm not sure, but she has to figure out what has happened to her husband and what's going on in this book. What is going on in this book? That's what I wanna know. Next up, we have another book that is so unique. I must say the Goodreads reviews are not good so far, but I am so intrigued by this book. I will have to give it a shot regardless. Of course, I don't pay attention to the reviews anyway, but sometimes the reviews are low and then I read the synopsis and I'm like, no, thank you. But this one, I'm excited about the synopsis. So I don't care about the reviews. We have You Have Been Summoned by Lindsay Lamar coming out on February 27th. This is the first time I've heard of this. It is an interactive novel where us, we as the readers are the detective and we have to take clues and stuff to figure out this murder mystery. But let me give you a little more. In this book, we have a group of 20 something year olds who meet for an overnight costume party at a historical manor. Of course, at the height of the party, one of the guests, twin sister's body is found. And of course, it's a murder mystery and we have to figure out who done it. You ready? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Had to do it. This is another one with two separate release dates, but I am going with the Kindle date because that's usually what I end up picking up anyway. My library takes a minute. I don't have the patience when I'm excited. This one is Five Nights by Rachel Wolf. The Kindle edition is coming out on February 29th and the paperback is supposed to be in September. I don't know why the difference, but again, I'm rolling with the Kindle edition release date. The tagline for this book says, a powerful family, a luxury cruise, a killer on board. Oh my. I'm excited, but let's calm down. <laughs> This one I'm gonna read straight from the synopsis of the book because I loved this part of the synopsis. It counts down the five days and it says, five, on the first night, you'll be wrapped up in the glamor of the ship. Four, on the second night, you'll wonder who is sending you threatening notes. Three, on the third night, someone will die. <laughs> Two, on the fourth night, you'll discover that someone knows the truth of what you did. Who, you, me, who? One. On the last night, you'll be left for dead. Will you make it back to shore alive? So I'm like, who's the you? Are we gonna be from the perspective of this killer or what? Okay, we're, are we from the perspective of the person who dies? I don't wanna die. <laughs> so fascinating. I can't wait. There are a few on this list that take place on a ship or an island. Like I said, I don't know. Sometimes authors themes just end up being similar in a year. I also have a few on this list that have reality shows, game shows, again, don't know what's going on this year, but I'm here for them all. So let's move on to the releases I'm looking forward to in the month of March. My bad, this is the only book I have for the month of March. But like I said, stay tuned for the end. I have bonuses. I just kept those for, you'll see at the end. But coming out on March 26th, we have Everyone is Watching by Heather Gutenkopf. Now, this one I'm a little apprehensive about because I did DNF her book, The Overnight Guest. So I'm hopeful for this one. This is another one I'm excited about. 
fingers crossed, we'll see. This is the first one on the list that is a game. Like I said, I have a few on here that involve games and clearly that's another trope that I love in books. In this book, we have five contestants who are competing for a chance at $10 million on the game show, One Lucky Winner. And it says the catch is that none of them knows what or who to expect and it will be live streamed for all to see. Of course, secrets begin to surface and we realize that someone is out for blood. Again, I love a game and a book. I'm always disappointed, but hopefully I won't be with this one. <laughs> Now let's move on to the month of April. This one I'm a little confused by the genre because it says horror, but I'm not really getting horror elements from the synopsis, so I'm not sure what we're getting. But I'm intrigued and excited nonetheless. Coming out on April 23rd, we have The Redemption of Morgan Bright by Chris Panettiere. In this book, a woman checks into an insane asylum to try to solve the mystery of her sister's murder. She creates a false identity only to lose her memory and possibly her mind. What is going on? It says the book unfolds over the course of chapters told from the perspective of the woman's sister, her alter ego or whatever, police interviews and text messages. So this should be interesting. I don't know what we're getting, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, next up we have book two in a series. I have not read book one, but I'm hoping I can skip book one or maybe I'll get to book one before this one. But coming out on April 23rd, we have A Game of Lies by Claire McIntosh. This is book two in the DC Morgan series. My cat just decided to get up here. You wanna say hi to the people? Say hi, say my name is Daisy and I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> she never does that. Okay, so this is book two in the DC Morgan series. Book one was The Last Party. I've heard of it, but I don't know why I wasn't interested. See, causing trouble. Okay, so. <laughs> Distraction. I'm not sure why I didn't read the last party. Something didn't really catch my interest, but like I said, I'm hoping I can skip to this one or maybe I'll go back and read book one. Let me know in the comments if you think I need to read book one. This one deals with a reality show. Like I said, a lot of the books on this list deal with shows, reality shows, game shows, virtual reality, all the things. In this one, we have seven reality show contestants who are stranded in the Welsh mountains. And it says each of these strangers have a secret. And if another player can guess the truth, they won't just be eliminated, but they will be exposed on live TV. I'm assuming these are secrets that they don't want to be found out in public. But why are you on here? Anyway, they signed up for it. <laughs> of course, there will be a murder. And Detective Morgan has to figure out what is going on with these contestants, the secrets and lies, and who is the murderer amongst them. So interesting. Like I said, I hope I can just jump to this one. <laughs> and now let's move on to the last book I have for the month of April. Coming up on April 30th, we have Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. I just love that title, Home is Where the Bodies Are. I don't want that, but I like the title. This is another one I am so excited about. I love the premise, especially because it involves VHS tapes, my childhood, my upbringing. In this one, we have three estranged siblings who reunite after their mother passes. Now we also know that their father just up and left them seven years prior to their mother dying. So. Clearly there's some things going on in this family. Now here's where it gets interesting. While going through their parents' belongings, they come up on a collection of VHS home videos. Those of us who grew up during that time, we know what that was like. And on one of the tapes, it shows a night in 1999 where their father is covered in blood. Why were you recording this? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> on the tape, there's also a dead body and their parents make a pact to get rid of the body. Again, why is all this on video? And how come they're just now finding it? So many questions. And of course it says, will the siblings leave the past buried or will they find out what secret their mother took to their grave? Of course they're gonna try to find out. Otherwise, end of book, the story will be over. I can't wait, this sounds so intriguing. I just gotta know. I wonder how the tape parts are gonna be in the book. Is this like a mixed media thing? Either way, if you notice, I love mystery thriller books that seem a little bit different. I don't really care for the domestic thrillers. There's probably a sprinkling in here like that could be considered a domestic thriller, but just like the husband and wife with secrets or the mom having issues with her child or whatever, those don't really get me. I love stuff like this. It has something unique about the premise. These are the ones that usually disappoint me, but it doesn't matter. They're the ones that excite me. Now, 
let's move on to the month of May. Kicking off the month of May on May 7th, I have the only horror short story collection on this list. You know I love my horror short story collection. I did a whole video on my favorite short horror story collection, so you can check it out. I'll link it here. But this one is Mother Knows Best Tales of Homemade Horror, edited by Lindy Ryan. Now, as I said, this is a short horror story collection. It also has poems and it features some authors such as Gwendolyn Keast, who I've read from before. Wasn't the biggest fan, but I'm curious to see what she has in this collection. And also, everyone knows Rachel Harrison. I also haven't read from her yet, so I love to dip my toe in in a short story collection before I decide if I want to read a novel by some author. Like I said, Gwendolyn Keats I've already read from, so I'm curious to see if I like her story in this book because then, you know, we'll see if it's just a no-go for her. But Rachel Harrison, this will be a good chance for me to get a little taste of her writing. Next up, we have another horror book, but it's a horror mystery. So, you know, I have to have a mystery in my books. This one is The House That Horror Built by Christina Henry, due out May 14th. Now, I have not read any books by Christina Henry. I'm very familiar with her. I just didn't have anything that really interested me, but this one does. In this one, we have a single mother who is working in the gothic mansion of a reclusive, horror director. I love the setting already. And it says his Chicago mansion is filled from top to bottom with terrifying props and costumes. It sounds like a place I would like to go visit, like a museum. But anyway, now our main character in this story is named Harry. And one day while cleaning the house, she hears some noises coming from a locked room. Of course, she goes to investigate and it sounds like a person calling for help. So what is going on in this mansion? Sounds like this director has a lot of things he's trying to hide. So should be interesting. Next up on May 14th, we have She Left by Stacey Gray. Now the tagline for this says, and I love it, 20 years ago, she survived. This time, she may not be so lucky. Ooh. Now in this story, we have a woman who survived what became known as the Memorial Day Massacre. 20 years later, 10 people who have connections to the crime have been invited to a remote cliffside house by a journalist looking to do a story on the murders. Now, another thing I love that has already been part of another book on this list, a storm closes in, of course, and guests begin to die. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again, I promise. <laughs> so it appears that someone will stop at nothing to protect their secrets and their involvement in that night long ago. Ooh, spooky. It's not a horror, but it sounds spooky. Let's move on to the next one. Next up on May 21st, we have The Main Character by Jacqueline Goldis. A lot of the books on this list have reclusive people, including this one. In this one, we have a reclusive, mysterious author named Geneva who has a unique way of crafting her novels. It appears as though she hires real people, conducts extensive interviews, and then fictionalizes their stories. Now, her newest main character is so excited because they get invited on a lavish train trip by Geneva, of course, all expenses paid, I'm sure. And this is no ordinary train, darling. This is the newly renovated Orient Express. That's right, this book is also supposed to be an ode to Agatha Christie or something like that, and then there were none. And it says that with each stop this train makes, it becomes increasingly clear that Rory is now going to be part of a real life twisty thriller with them as the main character. I mean, I'm here for the gothic vibes, the train ride, the Agatha Christie vibes, all of it to be interesting. Let's move on. Next up, we have a new release coming from Ruth Ware on May 21st. Now, she's another one I would say I'm mainly a fan of, but I've had some that weren't really up my alley, which would mainly be her last one from last year, Zero Days. I was excited about it. It was one of my most anticipated books of last year. But then when I started to read a little bit, I was like, I'm not really into this. And then I didn't hear the best things about it. So I'm not really sad I didn't read it. But I loved The Turn of the Key and I loved One by One by her. So hopefully this one follows suit and will be one that I enjoy. This one is called The Perfect couple, like I said, coming out May 21st. Another reality TV show. Don't know if all these writers got together and talked about what they wanted to do this year, but it's just funny that a lot of them ended up doing similar things. Anyway, in this book, we have a new reality TV show competition called The Perfect Couple, where five couples will compete for a chance at a cash prize. Of course, like some others on this list, they are cut off from the mainland by miles of ocean. They also have no cell phones because they had to give them up to participate in this reality TV show. It says tensions run high and the game show turns real when the stakes become life or death. So is there a mud dub? I hope so. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have another one that is so intriguing, involves some type of time travel. I love that. 
It's always complicated to read, but I still love it. Coming up on May 21st, we have The Man Who Saw Seconds by Alexander Baldazar. In this story, we follow a man named Preble Jefferson who can see five seconds into the future. Why just five seconds? I have questions already. <laughs> <laughs> One day he has a confrontation with a cop on a New York City subway and something goes wrong. He gets a glimpse five seconds into the future, which causes him to dodge a bullet and another person is killed instead of him. So because this happened in a public setting, government agencies get wind of his special ability and a manhunt ensues. This sounds so intriguing. It sounds like the Blake Crouch type of sci-fi thrillers that I love. So I am really going to be keeping an eye out for this one. Next up, also on May 21st, another sci-fi thriller. We have The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. This one is also very unique because in this story, we have a world that was destroyed by a mysterious fog that killed everything that it touched. So weird. So now we have an island that is closed off from everything else and it says that everything is safe and idyllic. And it says we have 122 villagers and three scientists on this island. They are all supposed to be living in peaceful harmony until one day one of their scientists are found stabbed to death. What? <laughs> this causes a lowering of the security system around the island and the fog starts to slowly creep in. It says if the murder is not solved within 92 hours, the fog will completely kill everyone on the island. Like I said, so intriguing, so different, so unique. All the synonyms. Let's move on to the last book in the month of May. A lot of May releases. It seems like the year starts off slow and then it just ramps up. By the time we get to May, June, July, it's just so many books. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, ending off the month of May, we have a book that I'm so excited about. The description for this just has me so intrigued. And that book would be If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finlay. Now, I have not read a book by him yet. It's funny, I think there have been books I've been interested in and then I start hearing people talk about them and then I lose interest somewhere along the line. Hopefully that doesn't happen with this one. Hopefully I read a sample and actually do read it. But. This is what I got so far. In this story, we follow a man named Ryan who on one terrible night, he is ripped from the car, hit over the head, and his girlfriend is taken screaming. I'm assuming he loses consciousness because all we know is that Ryan comes to and his girlfriend and the car are now missing. Now there is an investigation, but they have no evidence to convict him. And so he is cleared of all charges. But of course the public media thinks he is still guilty. So then we are five years later, he decides to start his life over with a new name and everything else. But one day he gets a call from his father that his girlfriend's car has been found. Now inside his girlfriend's car are two dead bodies and a note written by his girlfriend in her handwriting that says, if something happens to me, and then we have dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what happened? So of course, it's a mystery of what happened that night. Oh my goodness. I remembered most of the synopsis because it just stuck with me. Once I saw it, I was like, oh, I remember this one. I can't wait. If I read it, it'll be my first Alex Finlay. So we'll see, stay tuned. And now let's move on to the last month in this list, the month of June, my birthday month. <laughs> and kicking off the month of June on June 11th, I have a book. It was a surprise to me. I did not know this was coming. It's the third book in a series. I have read the first two books and enjoyed them both. And so I was like, we getting a third book. This is the third book in the Housemaid series. We have The Housemaid is Watching by Frida McFadden. This one is so interesting. I can't say much because it's the third one in the series. But what I can say is that the tagline says, she lives next door. She knows your secrets. What I've read, I'm here for it. I'm pretty sure this one will be read because I already know I like Frieda McFadden's writing. I already liked the first two housemaid books, so I can't wait. Perfect for my birthday month. Next up on June 11th, I have one YA book on this list. I do not usually like YA books. I've talked about this before. I've given them a try in the past. You can check out my, I think my mystery thriller books I'm looking forward to in 2021. That list was pretty much filled with YA books and that did it for me. But anyway, this one sounds intriguing. I'm gonna give it a try. We'll see. This one involves a library, so it piqued my interest. It is called That Night in the Library, and I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna try to say this author's name. I don't wanna butcher it, but you will see it here on the screen. In this book, it says seven students gather in the basement of their university library the night before their graduation to perform a ritual. Sounds like you're asking for trouble. A few minutes in, the lights go out, and when they come back on, course, there's a dead body. Naturally, the body count continues to rise and they have to survive with a murderer amongst them. Like I said, I hope this is a YA book that I can actually read and enjoy. Stay tuned to find out. 
Coming up on June 18th, we have books by two of my favorite authors. Got a hint. First up, we have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. It's so funny because the word on the street last year was that the only one left was gonna be his last book for a while and he was gonna be taking a break and that's why he went out with a bang. But clearly that was not true. He already had told us last year, like not long after that one came out that we were getting another book and so, here we are. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm super excited about this book because this seems like one of his horror mystery thriller books that don't really have horror in them. Like Home Before Dark, it was just okay to me. This gives me similar vibe, but we'll see. Now in this one, it is one night in July where two friends, Ethan and Billy, are having a sleepover in a tent. They fall asleep and in the morning, there are knife marks in the tent and Billy is missing, never to be seen again. So we fast forward 30 years later, we are with Ethan and he decides to go back to his childhood home. Why? Nothing good ever comes of that. Of course, while he's there, he starts to see strange things in the middle of the night and he's wondering, did Billy actually die? Is he seeing his ghost? What is going on? So because of all these strange things he starts to see, he is prompted to investigate what really happened on that night. So like I said, somewhat interesting. It doesn't excite me as much as some other ones on this list, but I'm still gonna check it out because it's Riley Sager and I've only DNF'd one of his books. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to get through it. Will I like it? We'll see. <laughs> all right, next up on June 18th, we have The Family Experiment by John Mars, returning to his speculative thriller type of book. <sighs> complicated history. I have loved The One and The Passengers, but I did not like The Marriage Act. And I also have not read his other book. I can't think of the name of it. The Minders. I have not read that. I started trying to read it and listen to the audiobook and I wasn't into it. So I don't know, I guess half I liked and half I didn't. But anyway, this one sounds so intriguing. He comes up with the most interesting premises and you can tell they're always taken from real life. This one is no exception. The tagline for this one says, some families are virtually Perfect. Now in this one, we're in the UK as we always are with John Mars books and an increasing number of people cannot afford to start families. Now I got to read this from here because it's just so much. So for those desperate to start a family, they can pay a monthly subscription fee and create a virtual child from scratch who they can access via the metaverse and a VR headset. Hell no, no. <laughs> And of course, like some others on this list, a reality show wants to document 10 couples raising these virtual reality children from ages birth to 18 years old, but it's gonna be sped up in a nine month period. What the hell? And it says the prize for this show is the right to keep their virtual baby or risk it all for a real baby. Like I said, so much. I hope it's not too much like it was in the Marriage Act. I talked about this in my most disappointing books of 2023. I'll link it here. But let's move on. We have another one for June 18th. I am losing daylight, whatever. This is taking me a long time to film for you all. No, this is also for me because I do go back and check my list to see what I wanna keep an eye on. So rounding out the month of June, as I said, I have some bonus ones, stay tuned. But we have The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. So this is one I'm not too sure about. I DNF the guest list and I also DNF the Paris apartment. So why am I gonna give this a go? Don't know, I'm glutton for punishment. But I'm going to give it a go because this is a locked room mystery and it sounds like the game and movie Clue. This is another one I'm gonna read straight from the synopsis because it just says it perfectly. It says, welcome to the opening weekend of the manor. We have the founder, the Lavelle, the mystery guest, the kitchen help, and the detective. All have an agenda, all have a past, but not everyone will survive. Oh, I hope it's good. So many of these just sound so promising. I've said this, I know. But now, what I've talked about in the beginning and just a minute ago are some bonus books that I didn't include. These are all by authors that I have either read from before and didn't like, or I have read from before and liked some books by them, but I'm not too sure about the one that's coming up or didn't like some by them. And I look forward to the one that's coming up. <laughs> You'll see, I'm gonna fly through these. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it's a lot. And I just wanted to mention them. So you know, I do have my eye on these books as well. So first up, we have End of Story by AJ Finn. Coming out on February 20th. This one I'm not too sure about because I did not like The Woman in the Window. So I will have an eye on it, but I'm not too optimistic. Next up, we have Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice, book four in the Finley Donovan series. I started book three and wasn't that into it, didn't hear the best thing, so I put it down 
but book four sounds like it's gonna be even better, so I don't know. We'll see. This one is due out March 5th. Next, also on March 5th, we have Murder Road by Simone St. James. I read The Sundown Motel by her, was not a fan, did not like it. I did a whole review on it. I will link it here. So I'm not sure if I wanna read this one. She usually combines horror and true crime type of stuff, and that's not really my thing, but this one did sound intriguing, so I will keep an eye out. You'll have to see if I decide to give it a chance. Also on March 5th, we have The New Couple in 5B by Lisa Unger. I did not like Secluded Cat Cabin Sleep 6. I participated in a live show book discussion and I just did not like it. But I loved her short story, The Sleep Tight Motel. So I don't know. Again, keeping an eye out. And starting off in the month of April, we have Mal Goes to War by Edward Ashton. I have talked about him and his books enough. Mickey Seven is one of my favorite sci-fi books of all times. I've read it twice. And Antimatter Blues, I wasn't as crazy about. It was one of my most disappointing books of 2023. Talked about it already. This one already sounds complicated. It says it is a cyberpunk sci-fi book. I don't think cyberpunk is really my thing, but because it's Edward Ashton, I am going to keep an eye out. It says it provides a satirical take on war, artificial intelligence, intelligence and what it really means to be human. That also doesn't grab me, so we'll see. Also on April 9th, I have Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. I did not like her book, Dead Silence. It was a DNF for me and I was so disappointed because it is a sci-fi horror as is this one and I was really looking forward to it. So I will be keeping an eye, a side eye on this one. Now in the month of May, on May 21st, we have You Like It Darker by Stephen King. This one scares me. <laughs> It says we're supposed to delve into the darker part of life, both metaphorical and literal. Again, I don't necessarily know that I want to go darker with Stephen King, but I'm going to keep my eye out and my ear to the streets to see what people are saying. We'll see if I can handle it. Also on May 21st, this one didn't make it to the list because it is a historical fiction. It is by an author who has another book that I love. It is The Medicine Woman of Galveston by Amanda Skinnendor. And I loved her book, The Nurse's Secret. It was one of my best books of 2022. So I had to keep an eye out for her next book. This one takes place in the 1900s and we are following a doctor who is part of a traveling medicine show. I don't even know what that is. Never heard of it, but sounds interesting. And apparently she deals with some hostile town people who don't want them there and their unconventional ways of doing medicine. So I'm just going to be keeping my eye out on this because I love the nurse's secret, but I don't know if I'm actually going to want to read this because there's no mystery or anything and I need a mystery. So I'll see. Now moving on to June, I have two books for the month of June. Again, both of these authors I am familiar with. First up, we have A Botanist's Guide to Society and Secrets by Kate Kavari. This is book three in the Saffron Everly Mystery Series. I did check out book one, The Botanist's Guide to Parties and Poison. Such a mouthful. <laughs> I was into it, but I stopped because I just kind of got out of the mood for it. So I have it on my to pick back up later shelf on Goodreads. So I don't know. We'll see if I do get back into the series. I don't know. I still wanted to put it on this list though. And last Lastly, on June 11th, we have Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. Now, I tried to read The Cabin at the End of the World. I couldn't really get into it. I saw the movie. I thought it was okay. It was more disturbing for my taste, so it was like a one and done. I also read his short story, The Last Conversation. I was into it until the end, and I ended up giving it two stars. So I'm not really sure about this one, but this sounds better than those. So we'll see. This one is described as a chilling twist on the cursed film genre. So like I said, we shall see. He always likes to do unique, weird things with his stories. So I don't know. He may not be for me. I'll just have to see. Did not mean for that to rhyme. <laughs> It is now getting dark. <laughs> it's not even five o'clock yet, but yes, you know, daylight saving, winter time, all the things. So I am ready to get off of here, go get something to eat and relax, go read all the good things for the rest of the night. So there you have it. 24 of my most anticipated new releases coming out in 2024. Plus bonus books that I have my eye on for various reasons. Whew, like I said, this was a doozy, but I always enjoy it. So Feel free to let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to any of these books. If there's something I didn't mention that you think might be up my alley, but like I said, go check my Goodreads shelf first. I may already have it on there and just didn't mention it in this video. Like I said, these are the ones that I am the most excited about. And as always, I will have all of these books listed below. Know that these release dates are subject to change, so just keep an eye out on Goodreads, Amazon, wherever you, know, you can find out release dates. Also, ways you can support my channel will be linked below as well. And of course, I did and forget if you want to let me know that you made it this far in the video and or show me some love go ahead and leave me a clock emoji because time has just flown by during this video and it's now getting dark leave me a clock a moon 
something like that because we are losing daylight and it took a lot of time to film this. <laughs> Anything involving time, I know you all like to surprise me, so go ahead, I enjoy it. And I think that is all for this video. My beautiful people, I have talked a lot. So, until next time, snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book, like hopefully some of these will be, unplug as much as possible, be kind to all kind, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.